welcome to the Vention Assembly series. My name is Jeremy, and I'm in charge of education here at Vention. In this video, we'll be taking a look at our roller conveyor, from the basic setup and assembly to compatible hardware. Similar to any of our modular actuators, our conveyors can be customized in terms of length, and as such, will require some assembly on site. With that, let's take a look at the basic hardware. This conveyor is made up of four main parts. You have the mounting brackets, the grooved rollers, the O-rings, and the motor mount. The first thing that you'll need before starting the assembly of the conveyor hardware is the frame that it will rest on. When designing the frame, make sure that the internal dimensions between the two supports is 585 millimeters. Once you have your frame set up, you can then start with the assembly itself. First, install each bracket on either side of the frame using four of our M8 14 mm screws, making sure that the brackets are in line with one another. If you're assembling a single row of conveyors, attach the mounts with the flanges facing outwards. If you're assembling more than one row, attach each of the inner brackets with the flanges facing upwards. In our case, since we're only assembling a single row, I'll be assembling it in the first orientation. With the brackets installed, you can move on to placing the O-rings and rollers. Each roller has a fixed shaft end and a spring-loaded shaft end for easy installation. Start by placing the required O-rings onto the rollers before attaching them to the bracket. If the O-ring is connecting two rollers, use the smaller 257mm ring, and if it's connecting a roller to a motor mount, use the larger 306mm ring. You can then insert the fixed end with the rings in place into one of the brackets and depressing the spring-loaded end, slot it into the opposite bracket. When inserting the next roller, make sure to slot it through the previous O-ring, then position it in the appropriate groove. Repeat this process for all rollers using the correct rings until they're all in place. With all the rollers in place, you can then install the motor mount to the supporting member beneath the conveyor. Do this using the two 80mm M8 fasteners. When designing the frame, make sure that the mount rests directly between two rollers that connect to it, and if possible, have the supporting member be height adjustable to allow for ease of assembly. Align the pulley with the grooves of the rollers above as best as possible before securing it in place. Once in place, connect the hanging O-rings. As a tip, you can use a T-handle as a lever to get the O-ring in place by first resting it in the desired channel of the motor mount and hooking the ring from underneath. Repeat this for each driven segment of your conveyor until you have it fully assembled. The final step would then be to install your motors to the motor mounts themselves. One thing to note is that each motor can drive a total of 14 rollers, seven on either side. Now, we'll move on to compatible hardware. The standard conveyor can be driven by our small, medium, or large NEMA 34 stepper servo motors. Furthermore, if you'd like to control the conveyor via digital I.O., you have the option to drive it using our available AC motor and BFD kit. For roller mounting, you can use the standard bracket that holds five rollers, or if you're looking to do a custom length, you can also use the mount for single conveyor rollers. As for upkeep, our conveyor rollers are low maintenance as all bearings are completely sealed. All you need to do is routinely clean the rollers and check for wear on the critical components. And with that, we've covered the basics of our roller conveyor systems. Thank you for watching, and please do check out the other videos in our series. Thank you.